guys, how are you doing? Good morning, Spartans. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on where you are in the world and depending on where you get to see this post. Anyway, my hair, it does its own thing, so it's doing whatever it's doing. Anyway, guys, don't worry about the hair. Guys, treat, please, yeah, treat this post. Treat this post, this topic, with the urgency with which I am delivering it. Guys, this is a human interest story. This is a continuity. This is a continuity video. Why is it sounding funny, that word, when I'm saying it right now? This is a continuity video. So, guys, if you're one of my spotters, you're going to remember the video... The video, the topic, the content that I posted about people being infected with hepatitis. Is it hepatitis? I don't know whether it's B and C. I'm not a medical professional. If you are, you would know. But the gist of the story is that people were being deliberately infected with hepatitis and HIV. So that's the gist of the story in a nutshell. Obviously, yeah, and they were doing it through blood transfers. So, guys, if you're one of my spotters, you would know about this story already. So, behind the scenes, decided to... Behind the scenes, decided to take up the story. That's the reason why I'm doing this continuity. Continuity? <laughs> That's the reason why I'm doing this continuity video. In case somebody else wants to get involved in this story further still. Because obviously it's one of those atrocities that are committed by all these, you know, big companies, big club, big conglomerates. Maybe, okay, let us use smaller words so that we don't get all tongue twisted today. But anyway, big core, what, what they did is they deliberately infected people with AIDS, basically. The people that they infected ended up having... AIDS and it was 122 of them according to this story guys so that I don't go all over the place so that I actually present this story as a serious case that it is I will read the story I'm going to read the story for you but if you don't want to hear me reading the story you can go and get the paper it's in metro metro.co.uk they're available online as well Guys, it's just because of the stress. that That's why it seems as if, you know, the delivery is a bit bitty. But I'm going to tell you everything. So it says, shame of plasma scandal medics. I covered, I was about to say I covered this story as if I'm a proper journalist. But I actually am. I studied audiovisual productions, communications and audiovisual productions productions you wouldn't think that would you from the way i'm talking at university so i am actually qualified you know in that respect so if you want to know what the course is about you can go and do your own research it says shame of plasma scandal medics blood victims treated like lab chimps okay guys please take note of the word chimps yeah because it's actually relevant to this story Okay, guys, we all know that there was a time when all of these big core, these big companies, these big corporations, they used to do their testing on chimps. We all know that, right? We all know that they actually sent one into space as well, probably more than one. Anyway, that's the story for another day. We'll get back to that later. So the story is by somebody called, I think that's Nura, Nura Maikin. Yeah, Maikinen. Sorry if I mispronounced your name, but it's important that I actually credit this story to you because obviously you have done the work and you decided to follow up and I appreciate that. So it says, medical experts compared hemophiliac patients to laboratory chimpanzees before later injecting people with a blood plasma product that killed them or ruined their lives documents revealed so there's actually documentary evidence i mean like i said i always provide receipts if i'm going to do something like this you know the kind of content that can potentially if you're not careful you know 
take you to the other side. You need to provide your receipts. You need to provide your receipts. So you have to have proof. If you're a whistleblower or somebody who decides, okay, I'm going to take, you know, I'm going to take this topic up or I'm going to take this corporation on because they did this, this and this and this. You have to make sure that you actually have documentary proof as in evidence, not hearsay, hearsay. Hearsay is not accepted in law. Yeah. Law is not social media. The law is the law. You need your proof, especially if you decide decide that you're going to take these kind of people on. So before I get to, because I'm so passionate about this, that's why it seems like I'm all over the place. But this is the kind of thing that they do. Remember COVID? These are the type of things that they do, especially if they feel as if, okay, they don't, they, they say they want their scientific evidence. They want their empirical evidence. They want it to be as factual as possible. So rather than testing on animals, they will test on human beings. Listen, some of these companies, they will actually approach you directly and say, do you want to be involved in so and so and so trial? For certain amounts of money and they there's even a company where you can actually register for medical trials if you don't mind being tested on but in that case you are actually given a choice and you will sign a disclaimer you know in case something happens to you so in that respect you took yourself there you you, you were given a choice you actually decided okay you're gonna give yourself up for a medical test that's why they give people a lot of money you know, they could give you £3,000 or something like that. There was a time I myself, I wanted to do it because I was so broke that time. But unfortunately, they didn't choose me. It was a medical test for about, medical trial. You know, they do their testings and whatever. And it was for about maybe six weeks or seven weeks. And they would pay you something like three grand. That's why people do it. But in this case, these people were deliberately infected. So let me continue with this story. So it says, around 30,000 patients were given factor eight. Take note of whatever factor eight is. Maybe they're going to tell us more about what factor eight is, or you can do your own research. It says, around 30,000 patients were given factor eight in the 1970s and the 1980s. Guys, you listening? Around 30,000 patients were given factor 8 in the 1970s and the 1980s, 80s, often without consent. Yeah? Often without consent. But the plasma, plasma is one of the main ingredients in blood, isn't it? It says the plasma from a pool of paid donors. Remember what I was telling you about the clinical trials? So it says the plasma... That's the blood, obviously, from a pool of paid donors, including U.S. prisoners, contained hepatitis and HIV. Guys, are you listening to what I'm saying? Please listen to what I'm saying. I'm going to take my time and explain this very, very well, because I want you to know about the kind of atrocities that these people commit. I want you to know about the kind of atrocities that they commit, and they do it knowing that the normal the normal joe the normal jane is not going to follow up on it because do you want to take on a big corporation how much money do you have how much power do you have eh? what kind of lawyers what kind of lawyers can you pay for they money is not their problem they can listen if they wanted to if they wanted to get a whole house of lawyers they can afford it mm? but you they know that you as the ordinary joe public and jane public you won't want all that kind of stress. Meanwhile, you're already sick. So how 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 are you actually going to do this? Yeah? I'm just presenting you guys with all of the facts. I want to give you guys the meat of this story. Yeah? So that if you decide, obviously, people are going to take this story up. Because people died out of no fault of their own. Yeah? This is how atrocious these people can be. These are the things that they do, yeah? And they get away with it. The reason why they get away with it is because it takes a lot 
It takes a lot to actually take up these cases and say, God, please, I have to fight these people because what they did is just so wrong and people deserve justice for what happened yeah, to their loved ones, their relatives, their loved ones, etc., etc. Yeah? Okay. I've already... That was the second paragraph. Around 30,000 patients were given factor 8 in the 1970s and the 1980s, often without consent, but the plasma from a pool of paid donors, including US prisoners, contained hepatitis and HIV. So we know that they go to prisons and prisoners donate these blood, donate their blood. Can you imagine? Can you just imagine? Wrap your head around that for starters. Yeah. Just wrap your head around that for starters. The sourcing, the outsourcing, where they're actually getting the blood from. Think about that to start with. Okay. And then it says today, today, this is yesterday's free paper. I got this on the bus yesterday when I was round and about. It says today Metro can reveal that in one document, a Scottish blood transfusion service meeting in 1983 was told i don't know who they were told by but this is what they said even if chimpanzee studies were satisfactorily completed studies in high-risk patients example hemophilia should still be carried out and it says continued on page six so here we are on page six now and it says uh, might wish to consider that this is an alternative to chimpanzee studies. So their studies on human is now an alternative to their chimpanzee studies. Guys, you're with me. You're with me, yeah? I hope you're with me. I hope you're with me. And it says, another of the documents found by campaign group Factor 8, so they're a campaign group, reveals the government-funded Medical Research Council, that's the MRC, was told as early as 1970 that the products have been found to transmit this form of hepatitis to chimpanzees. Okay. So they did their studies as early as 1970s on the chimpanzees. Yeah. And that's the result that they were given. It says products, products, that's obviously the plasma, isn't it? Have been found to transmit this form of, this form of hepatitis to chimpanzees. So in the study that they conducted, they actually found out conclusively that those diseases were transmitted to the chimps. Yeah? But they still went ahead to test it in human beings. Guys, are you hearing me? Listen, if you don't like the way that I'm presenting this story, if you don't like the way that I am presenting this news to you, please take up the metro, read this story. With these kind of stories, because they will, they will change the language so that it's not as harsh, so that the reality is not as harsh as we think it is. But I want you to follow the nuances of the story to, to actually... Think about what they actually did deliberately. They deliberately basically tested on human beings. All this English that we're speaking, all of this proof that we're giving you, all of the research, it just comes down to that simple fact that they tested on human beings after having already tested on chimpanzees, knowing that the chimps contacted those diseases. Yeah, they contracted those diseases, but they still went ahead to test on human beings. Guys, these are the things that get me all riled up and you see me and I'll be talking and I'll be all jittery because I just think to myself, the audacity of it, the fact that people actually do these things, they do it. Listen, you think it's a mistake. No, it's not a mistake. They actually do it deliberately. People sat down. Yeah, people sat down, they had a conversation about it, and they carried it out. These things never ever happen by chance. But the way that they present the information to us, they will present it as if mm, just so that we're not so shocked about all of the atrocities that happen in the world. I'm sorry, uh, I've got one of these bra tops on, and, and it's just all over the place. 
Anyway, let me continue with the story. And then it says, Another of the documents found by campaign group Factor 8 reveals the government-funded Medical Research Council, the MRC, was told as early as 1970 that the products had been found to transmit this form of hepatitis to chimpanzee. When they say the product, it's obviously the plasma, isn't it? But they were a clumsy experimental animal. Yeah, a clumsy experimental animal. Yeah, take note of that. Okay, so... And it says, a week later, it revealed a scientist wanted to conduct more hepatitis experiments on chimps, but the animals were expensive. So they were expendable because they were too expensive. Yeah. Okay. It says, a week later, it revealed a scientist wanted to conduct more hepatitis experiments on chimps, but the animals were expensive. Their supply was limited and maintenance costs were high. Okay, so they didn't get the budget, basically. They did not get the budget to do another, stu another study on another set of chimps. Yeah, that's basically what happened. And it says, Kate Burt, Haemophilia Society chief executive, said she hoped a financial report by the Infected Blood Inquiry. They've set up an inquiry after how many years due in the days after a six-year inquiry it says kate burt hemophilia society chief executive said she hoped a final report by the infected blood inquiry due in days after a six-year inquiry what does that mean guys read it yourself read it yourself and read between the lines they're very very clever they're very, very clever with language because obviously language, depending on how you use it, it changes, it changes the whole flavor of something. It changes the meaning yeah, of the information that you're presenting. So read it yourself and make your own conclusion. I am just the messenger. I am just delivering the story to you so that you guys know, everyday people, real life people, you know the kind of atrocities that are committed every single day. They experiment on us all of the time. All of the time. Hmm? They experiment on us all of the time. Do you guys remember that song that that guy sang where he was saying, uh, is it how we go no waiting they put in our tea? You know, something, something, something. They test on us all of the time. All of the time. I'm telling you guys the truth. Okay, let me continue. Who, who knew what, who knew what and when and why they decide that this community was expendable? Okay. More information. People, they, these people, they get into a room. They have discussions about it. They decide. They actually decide which set of people or which group of people they actually feel is expen expendable. And they conduct this test. They conduct the study. If you don't believe me, go on YouTube. I have saved so many stories on YouTube. Stories whereby women cannot conceive. They think maybe the problem is just for them. From them, they find out that it's due to maybe the water they've been drinking. It's due to some food that they've been eating. It might be due to the environment that they've been living in. Guys, things are happening. They didn't just start today. They have been doing it for a long, long time. So, the medical disaster resulted in about 4,900 people with hemophilia becoming infected. Almost all with hepatitis. Guys, the figures are staggering. And these are just the figures that they're actually giving us. So, if they say that 4,900 people with hemophilia became infected... So they became infected and they eventually had AIDS. Yeah. Uh, infected almost all with hepatitis. Yeah. But 2,500 of these were co-infected. Co-infected means that they were deliberately infected. So there's a group of people that were infected with hepatitis. And then there's another group as part of their studies, that were deliberately infected with hepatitis and HIV. HIV, as you guys know, leads to AIDS. So it says, 
but 2,500 of these were co-infected, double infection, with both hepatitis and HIV. Of the group infected with hepatitis C and HIV, only 250 are still alive today. So, they, guys, this is mass murder. They deliberately murdered those people. Huh? That's mass murder. Huh? People are responsible for that. They deliberately set out to murder those people. Huh? Out of 4,900 people with hemophilia infected, it says... But 2,500 of these were co-infected. So they pick a group, 4,900 people. They divide the group. They infect one lot with hepatitis C. That's what they're telling us. And then they infect the other lot with HIV. Guys, are you hearing me? So out of the 2,500, the ones that were infected with both strains... Out of 2,500 people, only 250, 250 are still alive today. If that is not mass murder, I don't know what mass murder is. If that is not what mass murder is, please explain to me what mass murder is. Yeah, All those people, all those people, yeah, they just, they deliberately infected them and those people died as a result of a test. A clinical test just so that they can actually get their results yeah to use in their other studies and in their development of guys this is real life i cannot sugarcoat these things this is real life these are the things that happen these are the things that they do we cannot get away from it but what we can do is hold them to account when we have the facts and we have the proof we can hold them to account Hmm? How can you go to a group of people whose society have decided to put away for whatever reason? How can you go to them to outsource blood? These are not the only places that they go to to get their blood. Most of the kind of people who donate blood, they're people who are down and out. Guys, let us tell ourselves the truth. Let us sell, let us just tell ourselves the truth. The people that they go to source this blood from, they're normally people who are down and out. Yeah. People who have jobs, who have money, they don't normally go. I'm sorry, it's a generalization, but it's true. They don't normally go to donate their blood. They're thinking about other things. They're probably thinking about where they're going to go on their holiday. Mm, they're not thinking about where they're going to. They're rich, they're successful, they have a livelihood. They're not thinking about where they're going to go and donate their blood, trust me. These people, they know where they go to when they want their blood for their tests and whatever euphemism, whatever euphemism they're using to call it. So let's continue, yeah? It's about reading, yeah? Today we're reading, no problem. Then it says, Survivor Roger Newman, 56 infected with hepatitis A and B during hemophilia treatment as a boy. Because that's what I said. There's so many trains. There's so many strains. A, B, C. So, listen, you will just have to go and follow up this story yourself. Survivor Roger Newman, 56, infected with hepatitis A and B during hemophilia treatment as, the, as a boy, told Metro no consent was given for his treatment. So, so, so how did they do it? How did they do it? If no consent was given, how did they do it? How did the blood get into his system? It says, uh, he told Metro, no consent was given for his treatment. He's 56 now. He's still alive. And there was no conversation with doctors. That's from somebody who is still alive as a result of this. No consent was given for his treatment. And there was no conversation with doctors. So how did he get the infected blood? They use their means and they use their ways. Hmm? They use their means and they use their ways to conduct these tests on us. Guys, 
we day here now. I am here. I am reading the story to you. I'm giving you the facts. I gave you the facts before. This is one of the things that I love about some of my Spartans and I love about behind the scenes. When they are ready, when they say they are ready to follow up something, they will follow it up in a way that you will be happy. Hmm? Remember when I told you guys this thing, when my instinct tells me, talk about this thing, post this thing, there is always a reason why. And as you can see, this is the result. This is the result. People got interested in those stories because all of this blood, they're shipping dodgy blood to blood banks. And I don't know whether people are just accepting on trust, yeah, that the source of the blood is kosher or what, and they just accept it, yeah. And then the transfusion starts and you don't know what you're ending up with in your system. Guys, if you think that I'm making this post because it's about me, it's not about me. It's, all, it's not about me. I know my status. There is absolutely nothing wrong with me. There's a time that people were trying to imply that there was something wrong with me. I had a full medical checkup, yeah, with my GP. Many years ago, maybe I have to have another one, but I am not sexually active. Mm? So there is nothing wrong with me. For those people who were trying to spread the narrative of me having AIDS or being HIV positive. Foul! Foul! The devil is a liar. There is nothing wrong with me. Absolutely nothing wrong with me. Clean bill of health. Okay? The thing that is wrong with me is the spiritual attack that they have been attacking to. They have been attacking my eye because they don't want me to see again. And sometimes my arm, sometimes my arm feels like, you know, when you feel as if you're having a stroke or something like that. So sometimes I'm saying, ah, is it that they want to send me stroke, partial stroke or something? I don't know. But anyway, guys, I digress. We'll continue that another day. Let me just talk about this. I'm even tired of reading the story itself. You guys might have to continue reading the story yourself. And it says, this is a, this is a relative of somebody who was tested on. Her name is Rebecca. Rebecca Padayaro, 38. She says, she, they say she was 10 when her dad, Neil King, died. Said hemophiliac boys. They used to call them the hemophiliac boys. Imagine, they even had a name for them, the hemophiliac boys. Said hemophiliac boys like him were used, they were used as they were cheaper than chimps. Guys, this story is actually very, very terrible. I remember just reading it when I was on the bus and just thinking, eh? so I had to take the paper with me and just read it again. And as bad as these stories are, normally when you read them, you know that the reality is actually even worse. It's true, guys. As much as this story is a really, really terrible story, you know that there's more to it. There's always more. The reason why we don't even delve into this subject is because I believe that there's a part of us as human beings that doesn't actually want to know the whole truth. You know when they tell you something atrocious and you're like, there's always that little bit of reserve in you. Well, okay, let me talk about myself. There's always that part of me that thinks to myself, if they're telling us this, only God knows how terrible the reality of it, it really is. You know, they actually call them hemophiliac boys and they basically used to just test on them rather than chimps. So basically mm -hmm. they actually saw them, they saw those boys as lower than chimps. Guys! Are you hearing what I'm hearing? Please, I want you guys, those of you that, those of you that are my Spartans, please, I want you guys to read this story. I really do want you to read this story because all of us go to hospital, yeah? You don't know where you're going to find yourself in a situation whereby you are going to need a blood transfusion or you're going to find yourself in hospital or whatever. You don't want to end up being infected with hepatitis, HIV, or some other horrible terminal disease just because you went into a hospital like any ordinary human being would. 
guys there's a reason why i do these videos when i have to there's a reason why this thing is the way it is there's a reason why people like me tell these stories guys i have been through too much speaking truth to power to stop today as long as i'm alive i will always tell them the truth that they need to know the people the people are crying out for justice People are crying out for justice. Hmm? People are crying out for justice. Eh? Rebecca Pag Pagliaro, 38, 10, when dad Neil King died, said, hemophiliac boys like him, that's like her dad who passed away, were used as they were cheaper than chimps. She added, it's too painful. They were seen as less than that. They were seen as less than animals. I myself, I know what that feels like. I've been in a situation where I have been regarded as less than an animal. I know what that feels like. It's like you get to a point where you feel as if you're totally devoid of humanity, you know, because, because somebody has decided to treat you like an animal. You know, they've actually robbed you of that dignity that you feel every human being has just for being a human being in the world. Huh? Oh, wow. Infected Blood Inquiry, Chief Brian Langstaff has said, the way they present this information, Infected Blood Inquiry, Chief Brian Langstaff has said failures, systematic, individual, and organizational failures will finally be exposed. When? This happened, this happened in the 1970s. The reason why I am talking about it to you now is because people have decided to follow up on the story. That's another thing, guys. That's another thing that I have noticed in this. If people make a fuss, if they do something atrocious like this and people make a fuss, then, you know, they might make a few they might make a few noises as if you know they're actually interested in doing something if people don't make a fuss they won't either they actually do focus groups on it so they will actually decide on what the public's reaction is to what has happened and then they will take their own action in line with what the public think so if there's a human interest story that is, it's atrocious, but people don't really, you know, make that much of a fuss about it because we're becoming so desensitized to all of the horrific things, you know, that government does. It's true. We're becoming so, de so desensitized. Mm -hmm. We are becoming so desensitized to all of these atrocities that all of these big companies and government commit that, we kind of choose, we can't, on, on a scale of one to five, we choose how bad it is, you know, before we make our complaints. Mm. Have you noticed, have you noticed that as an individual, you yourself, you're becoming, you know, so desensitized to violence? Have you noticed that within yourself? Okay, no problem. So, they have got their infected blood inquiry. This infected blood inquiry was set up in 2018. When did those atrocities happen? Hmm? When did the studies happen? The studies were conducted in the 1970s and the 1980s. Hmm? It says an MRC spokesman told Metro in a statement it had supported the work of the infected blood inquiry since 2018 so that's what i said you know the nuances i told you that they use with language what they put in this little paragraph is very very weighty information you see that little statement that they put in this a little paragraph of how many lines one two three four is very very weighty information but they present the information in a way that will not make you so angry or outraged when you read it. What they are telling you is that 
the MRC knew about it and supported that work. So they authorized them and they endorsed the work that they did. That is what they are saying. Oh, that is what they are using style. They are using style and euphemism to say. That is what they are saying. That the MRC gave those people the go ahead to say, Mwah, we have heard uh, the thing that you people have said. It's okay, carry on. That is what they are saying. I'm not patronizing anybody. I am not saying that anybody is stupid. But there's some people who don't understand the nuances, you know, of how these people work, you know, and how, you know, they do these things and how they get away with these things. So that's basically what happened. And then they say Professor Mark Turner, director of the Scottish National Blood Transfusion Service, acknowledged, he acknowledged language used. This is a critical point. It says Professor Mark Turner, director of the Scottish National Blood Transfusion Service, acknowledged language used in the 1983 document was unacceptable. He acknowledged language used. He did not say that what happened or what transpired was unethical, but he acknowledged language used in the 1983 document was unacceptable. If I had the strength, I would go and look for the 1983 document. But you, who's interested in this story, who's watching this, my video, I feel like you're actually going to do that. I feel like you're probably doing it right now. Yeah, me, I'm so angry about this whole thing. Because only God knows how many people that they killed deliberately in the name of uh, plasma study. Yeah? He, he said that a language used in the 1983 document was unaccept, uh, unacceptable. Not that the practice of what they did was unacceptable, but the language used in the document was unacceptable. Guys, do you see how you can distance yourself from something using language? Okay. They will say that I am patronizing them. Well, they won't say that because they know I'm not. Ah, he also added that blood services had changed a great deal. Guys, <laughs> how? If you say that blood services have changed a great deal, why are we still having cases of people who are going into hospital, people going into hospital and coming out with infections, yeah, through blood transfusions or blood work? Why is that happening? Yeah? Yeah? Why is it still happening? It shouldn't even happen. It shouldn't even happen at all, obviously. It shouldn't happen. And if it did happen, because we're humans, we always give ourselves leeway. We, all are, we always give ourselves space for human error. If it actually does happen, the percentage shouldn't be this high, should it? It shouldn't. If we have to accept that horrible things happen, if we actually have to accept that this company, these companies run tests on us, they do. By now, we should all know that and accept it. They do. It's unacceptable, but we know that they do it because they have their clever ways of doing it. But the margins of error, should they actually be, should they be that bad? Should they be that large? Should the percentage of people who actually get to lose their lives, should it be that high? I mean, obviously, they actually have to agree that they have done it in the first place for them to actually take any responsibility for what happens. First of all, you actually have to agree that you did it. The conversation has to start. Once the conversation has started, then, you know, you begin to work on the things that are not working. But the thing is, they're pretending as if these things are not happening. They're just pretending as if the things are not happening. That is where their problem is because they can't be transparent. They just can't be transparent because they still want to look as if they're holier than thou. Okay. They'll say, Madam, you are going on and on and on and on and on. He said blood services have changed a great deal. Personally, 
I don't know. I really don't know. They would somebody somewhere would actually have to do the report, do the work, do the legwork, and actually show us and tell us in the language that we understand how do blood services work in this day and age. Heaven forbid that something happens to me or somebody that I love and they have to go into hospital. Heaven forbid that they actually come out of hospital with a, a hepatitis A, B or C infection or HIV. Huh? You wouldn't want that to happen to anybody. I believe that you really wouldn't want that to happen to anybody, even somebody that you hate. Yeah? Okay, guys. So, it says, why is the reason that blood services have changed? This is the reason why he says they have changed. Because they have more stringent donor selection. Outsourcing where the blood comes from. Do you believe this? Let me get you guys engaged in this topic. Let me get you guys involved in this topic. You, the person that is watching this video. You, the person who is watching me, listening to me, give this commentary on this case. Do you believe that they have more stringent donor selection? Do you actually believe that? If you believe that they actually have more stringent donor selection, tell me why you think so. Why you think so? Why do you think that they have more stringent donor selection? Please tell me why. You as an individual, tell me why you think so. Because at the top of the story, they said that the product... Guys, remember the product is the blood. Remember at the top of the story, they said that the product came from some U.S. prisons. That's just the one that they're telling us. Guys, that is just the one that they're telling us so that, we're, so that we will not be alarmed. There's obviously more to the story. Yeah? And guys, the story continues. I'm going to stop reading the story because obviously I'm finding it very, very annoying. I am finding it very, very annoying and it's making me trip up on my words. So, guys, I want you to continue with the rest of the story. You can see the story. It continues here. Guys, this channel is an interactive channel. <laughs> it's interactive. Mm? Yes, yeah, it is an interactive channel. So, you can talk to me. You can communicate with me. If you see me on the road and then you start shouting something, I won't know what you're shouting about because it's out of context. Yeah, if I see you on the road and you start shouting at me, you know, as a response to something that I've posted online, oftentimes you just see me, I just walk past or I just look at you because it's out of context. I'm out in the streets, I'm in the road, I'm actually doing something else that is completely different to whatever I posted maybe 10 days ago. And you see me in the street and then you shout something at me and I'm like, I just look at them because I'm like, I have absolutely no idea what that person is talking about or why they're talking about it now. So that's why I don't answer. And anyway, my dad said I shouldn't answer anyway. My dad said I shouldn't answer. If somebody wants to communicate with you, I believe that it, they should understand how to communicate. If they want to talk to you, they talk to you directly. But if people are shouting stuff out at you, expecting that you're going to understand, hmm? It's on them because they're not communicating properly. So, guys, on page 6, metro.co.uk, you can continue the story yourself. It starts with the Factor 8 group founder, Jason Evans. Unfortunately, his father died. That's the reason why he's interested in this, obviously, because his own father died as he was infected with HIV and hepatitis. He said companies companies knew of the dangers but used these products in people rather than animals. Guys, I'm going to stop reading the story. Honestly, I'm going to stop reading the story. I'm going to allow you guys to continue reading the story. And if you're somebody who is behind the scenes or if you're in a position where you know that you can do something or get justice, 
for all of the people who have either passed away or, or become infected, you know, who are actually currently living with those diseases in those situations out of absolutely no fault, absolutely no fault of their own. Absolutely no fault of their own. Guys, if you're somebody who wants to get involved, this is a community. We help each other. Yeah, we help each other. We grow by lifting other people up. This is a global problem because we're talking about plasma. We're talking about blood transfusion. This is not about wealth, status, money or power. This is something that could actually affect any of us. Don't think to yourself, ah, I have money. I go to the best hospital in the world. So there is no way that somebody can infect them with their polluted blood. Oh, mama, oh, mama, oh, why go there? Guy, do your, do, do, do your research. Oh. Don't find yourself in a situation that you went to the shop to buy a car. You came back with buns. I have told you. Guys, I don't know where you are in the world watching this video, but good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Today, I gave the greeting at the end because I was so, I was so animated emotionally at the beginning that I didn't greet you, my lovely Spartans. Thank you so much to all my new Spartans. Thank you, guys. My numbers are growing. I am growing as a person. I am also becoming more confident in myself. I have come a long way, guys, because there was a point whereby I couldn't even go into the streets. I couldn't even go into the streets. I couldn't go into the streets. I still can't turn on my television. There was a time I couldn't actually turn anything on because it was like it was all about me and not in a positive way. So, guys... God gave me my breakthrough, as you can see, every single day, I, be, I am getting better and better. I am. I'm still in, I don't know if I will ever be, <laughs> I don't know if I'll ever be completely myself, the way that I used to be. But guys, it's a journey. It's a journey with my God. I have gone through so much. And those things that I went through, I went through them because of a reason. Because when the time comes for me to use that information or that experience, I always know. I say, okay, that's the reason why that thing happened then. So that I could talk about it now. So guys, to those of you guys who like me, for those of you guys who enjoy my content, for those of you who enjoy me, the person that I am, guys, this is who I am. I just want to get better and better at what I do so that, you know, we can we can create the community that we want. The things that happen in the world that we don't like about, maybe as one person, maybe as one person, I might be frightened to talk about it. But if I know that I have a community behind me, you know, that will give me more confidence. Guys, this is why people who have large communities, who have large followings, that's why they make so much change in the world, either positive or negative. Guys, we all see it happening. You know when somebody has a very, very, very large community, they have a large following and they say something, they say something that is completely stupid or something that is completely wrong. But people take it up. People take it up. Why do they take it up? Because they believe their community. They believe in each other. So guys, we, if we, we who want to actually speak truth to power in a positive way. Imagine if we have a community of a million people. Imagine the difference. Imagine the positive difference that we could make in the world. If we have a community of a million people. Imagine what we could do. Imagine what we could do. Huh? Just just think about it. The possibilities are endless. The possibilities of what we could do is endless. Nobody will be able to tell us, mm, you don't want to go there. Why? We will say, why not? Why won't we go there? There's a million of us. Mm? A million people, guys. Guys, please. Guys, please, I am begging you in the name of God. Abba Father. Abba Father, please let it happen for me. The same way that I raised my hand on Instagram, you answered me. Abba Father, please heal me, direct me, 
anything that you want me to do. Eh? Let me be obedient. Let me not use my own human thinking. Because so many times he will tell me to do something. Guys, if I start analyzing it, I won't do it. Hmm? Guys, talk to me. Guys, talk to me. Talk to me. Because I know that I'm not the only one. Once you start over analyzing it, you will not do it. That's why sometimes I just have to jump to action. Because I know that if I overthink it, I ain't going to do anything. So, guys, thank you so much. Thank you very, very much. Guys, the hair is doing what it wants to do. The hair is just doing its own thing. Hmm? The hair is just doing its own thing. So I don't really know what I'm going to do with the hair. The hair is doing its own thing and it's actually, it's just growing on its own. I could decide to cut it because I want my dreads to be fat. I could decide to cut it or I could just decide to just allow it to keep on doing its own thing, you know, just to see what it's going to look like. If you want to get involved, you could get involved. Guys, one thing about growing old is that you don't get as offended as, about things that people say as you used to when you were younger. Guys, people tell me all kind of things these days. Guys, sometimes I will actually start laughing. When I start laughing, the people that were cursing me, gaslighting me, or trying to make me feel uncomfortable, it confuses them. <laughs> Guys, I've actually done, I've done it so many times in real life where they've insulted me and I just, I found it, I found the insult amusing. Honestly, on more than one occasion, they insulted me and I actually found the insult amusing. You know, and it disarms people. It disarms people when they actually insult you and you laugh. Guys, I give you guys so many tips. I give you guys so many tips, so many tricks, so many hacks on how to live your life. Guys, live your best life. Don't hurt anybody. People can people can disagree on issues but still love each other, you know. People can actually disagree on things and still care about each other and still like each other. But we have been so conditioned. We've been so conditioned. We've been conditioned to feel that in order for somebody to love you, they must agree with everything that you say. Nah, it's not true. It's not true. Two grown-ups, two adults can have a healthy disagreement about something. Go to bed and make some serious love. That is called maturity. It's called maturity. When people are so mature and so in sync and so in line with each other that they can disagree and still love each other guys that is a place where love lives that is a place where love lives because we have been given so many kinds of conditioning there are some guys that you're with it has happened to me so many times there's some guys that you're with they expect you to agree with every single thing that they say if you do not agree with every single thing that they say they will say you don't love them. Guys, why do you think that some women just end up agreeing with everything that their man says? Because they don't want the man to feel like they don't love them. We will continue that topic another day. Guys, if you like what I just did here, hit the subscribe button. Tell me what you think about my hair, especially if you're one of my spotters. Do you want me to still keep on praying for natural hair and natural dreads? Because obviously the hair is natural hair and it has locked itself and it just does whatever it wants to do. And I just allow it to do whatever it wants to do. But I just use a product on it. I use product on it and on my edges, you know, just to make it fuller. So guys, this is interactive channel this is community building this is me telling you that guys you are part of my community if you ask me as a community and do this for us if it is in my capacity to do it i will do it i will at least try and do the research you know to see if i can actually do that presentation for you so Get involved. What do you want me to do with my hair? Do you want me to color it again? Do you want me to just let the dreads get thicker and thicker? Because it's natural heads. These dreads will get thicker and thicker. I can let them get thicker 
naturally or i can go to the salon and ask them to you know do some magic but actually my dad said i should not allow people to be touching to be fiddling with my hair i just remembered he just reminded me guys because you know that our hair also has an aura i do that is because of the nature of the stuff that i do yeah so i just prefer to just do my own hair and not have people fiddle with my hair i believe that all of you saw well not everybody would have seen it did you guys watch the video where the girl went to do her hair in the salon she's a black girl she had lovely black hair you know you know when they say good hair she had lovely black hair she went to the salon to do her hair and i don't know what transpired between them you can go the the video is on youtube i don't know what transpired between you guys you know salon hi db whatever happened and the woman that was doing her hair cursed her with her hands in her hair so her hair started falling out in clumps anyway guys <laughs> that one is somebody else's content but i understand exactly what happened it might have happened to it might have happened to me who knows you know when you go to do your hair now you don't know you don't know what people are dealing with you don't know when i say people just be prayerful when all these things that we do energy aura accent everything is mixing energy is mixing protect yourself not the way you think that you're protecting yourself protect yourself by praying pray 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 some people want to call it meditation because they're too embarrassed to call it prayer what is the embarrassment with being a prayerful person meditate then cover yourself protect yourself i'm not talking about juju but know that when you go into the world you're going to meet so many different kinds of people at the very least, say the Lord's Prayer in the morning, anytime you leave your house. You don't, when you go into the world, you don't know what people are carrying with them. Hmm? People's aura, people's energy, things that they have been through, ancestral juju. All of these things are very, very real. Hmm? They're so real, they manifest in real life, but people are still using it to play. People think that these things are a joke. Eh? Somebody went to the hairdresser to do her hair. Eh? Somebody that had naturally long, beautiful black hair ended up, ended up with clumps, ended up empty scalp. Mm -hmm. Why? The hairdresser cursed her. Anyway, guys, the Lord is your strength. Smash the like button if you liked it. Comment, subscribe. If there's anything in particular that you would like me to do. Obviously, as a growing community, you make a request and I will come back to you and say to you, okay, yes, I can do this. Or yes, I can't do this. <laughs> but obviously, if I want to grow as an individual, I have got to challenge myself more. I know that a lot of people want me to travel because they want to see what I'm like when I travel. <laughs> hey, if you want to see me travel, make me grow. Yeah, if you want to see me travel. I don't know if I want to travel for... Actually, I was going to say something a bit saucy, but I'm not going to say it. Mm, I was going to say... I was going to say, I don't know if I want to travel for a small amount of subscribers, but I want to travel for a big amount of subscribers, but I don't know. Is that too cheeky? I don't know. I don't know. Because money is involved now. Or, or, or doesn't it matter either way? If I travel with a small amount of uh, subscribers, when I come back, would the numbers be more? Anyway, guys. Love you, Spartans. <clears throat> this was a long video, unlike me. This was a long video, unlike the kind of videos that I normally do. But guys, so we can go. Man, I have I have become a dreadlock person. Hey, hey. Mm, wonderful hair. Mm.